This episode of Reasonably Spontaneous Conversations is brought to you in part by In Search of the New Compassionate Male. For more information, go to newcompassionatemail.com. Hola, Isabel. Hola, Denise. ¿Cómo estás? Bien, 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 bien. Uh, what a time. What a, an absolute time for the, you know, you know, I was thinking I was, I was born in Mexico. And the thing that when I came here, uh, and I'm 73, so I was naturalized when I was, uh, when I was six. And my, I, w one of the things that I always thought about the United States is that it's too beige. And that the Latino, the la Latino brings color. I mean, look at the Mexicano and the Colombia uh, and 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 the Colombians and and and, the, the, and all. There you go, and and the Chileans and all that. I mean, that we bring color. We bring color to a beige country, and that was the place that I want wanted to say. I'm, thank you so much for joining us on Reasonably well, thank Spontaneous. Thank you for having me, Dennis. It's so nice to meet you and to be on this uh, beautiful platform with uh, everyone listening and joining. Yep. So I'm excited. Thank you. It's you know, and one of the things that we have here on the Tarda Media Network and in Reasonably Spontaneous Conversation is the empowerment of women, because we feel that 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 we are, and because you're you're such a leader in the industry, and and you have been, and and you have you have built a company, and you are making a difference all throughout the industry, and entertainment really is the leading edge of where our thoughts, and the culture is going to be changed. Yeah. So and, and and the but so I want to go back a little historically with you and and to to you as a like when and where were you 18 years old? Well, I was I had just come back uh, I came back from uh, Florence. I went to uh, Italy yes. to, after high school to uh, learn Italian because I was going to possibly um, go to Milan to study uh, fashion design at Marangoni, which is, you know, where wow. Giorgio Armani went and Gianfranco Ferre. <laughs> so I went to study Italian first. Um, and then when I came back, I was living in Colombia. I was born in Queens, but I was living in Colombia back then. Uh, you asked me 18 specifically. And then when I came back to, um, to Colombia, I got into a terrible car accident. And oh. Uh, and I was, yeah, I mean, I, my face was, <laughs> I mean, I'm saying this because this has a lot to do with, with how it molded my creative kind of side or uh, being a creator of stories and telling my stories through, um, uh, through film and TV, you know, uh, with projects that I've been developing. And so I've used, um, parts of my life and one of them being a big car accident when I was 18 specifically that that it affected the rest of my life and but also um it, it's it's it, it's always it always comes from an inspiring way that we can you know that we can uh, uh get out you know move forward and uh and and even with the hardest times that there is hope and you know so that that's what I bring as an empowerment you know with my stories. And I think that today here in Hollywood, um, I think that that's what it, we're seeing more and more, the Latinx stories. Yes. That's where it's authentic. So I'm from Colombia, like you said, Chile, Argentina, Mexico, Paraguay, Uruguay. I mean, there's so oh. many different, Brazil, Latin cultures within yes. the Latin America. There's all these cultures and we all have different stories based on, you know, Colombians. We have a completely different culture than Mexicans, right? Totally. So that's what we're trying to, to um, it's a learning curve for a lot of, uh, like you say, the beige, <laughs> right? I love that. I've never heard that before, by the way, <laughs> um, because, you know, in casting is white, you know, Latin. <laughs> Hispanic, you know, redhead. I mean, it's just like, oh my god. But when it comes to to culture, it's really about culture. It's yes. about, right. It's not just 
oh, he, he's going to look Mexican, so he has to look like this, you know? No, and that's, and that's the thing. I mean, when people say to me, you don't look Mexican, I say, you don't know what a Mexican is. In Mexico, we go from the whitest of white to the blackest of black, yeah, and everything in between, that the, that the brown that people say is the, the Indio. This is this is the this is the, the the first nation culture that was here way way beyond the mestizo mestizo when we be, begin to get the blends and all the but that's what I love I love the gradient as opposed to the binary yes and and that you bring up a great point because it's so stereotyped okay how a Mexican should look like but there are Mexicans that are blue eye and are blonde and they have their history in Mexico, from Mexico. And how did that become, why is he like that? Why, why did he become, uh, you know, what is the history of his ancestors? Exactly. Those are the storytelling, um, the storytellers, the filmmakers, the creators that are making a wave. Therefore it creates a domino effect with everything else, which is of course the storyline, uh, authenticity, bringing the stories of, uh, you know, giving a light to to so much that people don't know about our cultures, you yes. know, and and then the casting and then the, you know, so it really is a great, this is the perfect time for Latinos. And I've been in, in, um, or, you know, I like Latinos, Latinas, Hispanic, Latinx, whatever <laughs> you call it. I use, listen, I use Latinx because I, I got it from this new platform that uh, Eva Longoria, Edward James Olmos, you know, all these amazing, powerful Latinos in Hollywood, they created a platform called La Collab, LA Collab in, in uh, dot com. Mm -hmm. and, and for once, I got the meaning of Latinx because being also in advertising, it's always been that U.S. Hispanic market, Latina, Latino, Hispanic, you know, all of that. But Latinx, what they did is they said, OK, look. We're going to use Latinx because we want to create a brand. It's not like Latinx means a millennial, new generation, or it means the LBT, LBGTQ community. Right. It, just, it means everyone, but it's more of a brand. So, so that's what uh, why I. Ah, oh, thank you for explaining Latinx. that. See what I mean? And that's and through that which is a movement, LA Collab, is to help Latinos in Hollywood to be represented. So I stand for representation matters. I stand for inclusion, diversity, Latinx, whatever you want to call it. Um, I, it's all nosotros, it's all us, it's all, you know, it, it, I, I, I love supporting all the organizations. I sponsor all of them. When it comes to uh, to or you know like the Ricardo Mot Motalban yes. uh, organiz organization that he created in 1971 yep. um, to help uh, Latinos in Hollywood. So I just had we just had a holiday party which I sponsored um, Contacto my company and um, and and just you know and, and I I just I've always wanted to be growing up when I was 18 I wanted to be an actress. Yeah. And then, car accident really was like oh my god now my face you know i had all this you know scars and everything but i got out of that and then i pursued my acting no matter what and my my dream that i know how it is to be an actor to have those dreams of you know hollywood film tv oscar right you know, fame i mean it's okay to have those dreams yeah why not um and, and, and I moved here as a Latina back in 1999 after studying, acting in, uh, in great schools in New York. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I got to know the trial. I, I, I went through the trial and error as an actress. How, uh, however, it's like I never, I never, cons I, like I was seen by agents. They were, oh, Latina. Yeah, you're Latina. So they really wanted at the time to have me uh, represent me and, and I, I had good representation, but it was still very young, the whole Latin, you know, everything. Because, Absolutely. I mean, I, like from there to now, it was now, it's like there's more cat, because I'm a talent manager, right? I'm a talent manager and I am um, I uh, executive producer for film and TV, a project yes. that I mostly develop and I, I create, um, the teams, you know, the team, the producers, the casting directors, all that. Um, so, so my point of that is that, um, um, 
uh, what was I saying? <laughs> well, the thing, the thing is, is that you just had 17 amazing points along, along that way, because yeah, what we're seeing, awesome. what we're seeing, <clears throat> Isabel, in the, in, in the community, are you seeing the conversations? Because you've been there when the conversations were going, okay, well, we have this, this small role. We have this idea, this very, very narrow idea of what the Latinx roles could be. Are there, are there conversations that you're having at the executive level different? Are you hearing the, 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 the executives, which are still overly represented by white males, mm -hmm. In the, are, are they more receptive now? Are they seeing the market, this billion people market that we can, I mean, goodness gracious, why, why would you leave that market out there? Exactly. And I think that the first one to discover that was, like I said, uh, me being here. And, and, and when I started working at a big agency, I created the Latin uh, division. And I That's said, what you're saying. You, you're, you're the leader here. You're the, exactly. you're the so one I, that has been on the leading edge. Yes. So I started that, but the, nobody was ready for that at, at the moment. They, they gave me the opportunity at a big talent agency. However, it was, it was hard for the agents at that moment to kind of digest that at, at, at the, because like I said, the stories, it's all about the writing, the stories, <sighs> the authenticity, but fast forward to now. So now the reason why I, 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 you know, I decided to go from act, acting to talent management. It was because I really, I really believe that I could help the community, the Latinos mm -hmm. in Hollywood and uh, to, to elevate to elevate uh, and to be to have the standard that you know the the whites uh, you know the 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 yep. people that have been here for thirty years let's say so now now we have a wave of since all these amazing creators are now coming up and coming up and coming up now I see what you said I have um, you studio executives reach out to me and say hey. You know, I'm calling you from this big studio. Can you send us your Latinx projects? And then, so I go, yeah. Because <laughs> Finally. All the studios and everyone and all, you know, even in the advertising, everyone wants to tap into this market because it's a huge market, not only, um, you know, money-wise, you know, what, the, what they can uh, make, uh, but, but it's just like, there's no way that you can't, I mean, now it's just, um, everywhere you go, it's diverse, you know, yes. so it's not the same thing that, that we're all seeing years and years ago. I mean, I, yeah. I'm so glad this is, uh, I, yeah. I'm so over white males being overrepresented in that. I mean, even though I'm here because I, I look at diversity, Isabel, as, as you know, how, if you, if you go out into a field and you plant that same crop in that one field over and over, year after year, what happens to the soil? Yeah, exactly. It's depleted. And but if but if you take that same field and you put wonderful little plants in it and all different animals and all that, then, then that diversity ends up enriching the soil. And that's the value proposition yes. that we can pitch to men like me is to say the diversity is actually going to end up getting your bottom line even richer because yeah. you have invested in that diversity. It's not just because you're trying to be kind. It's because it's a good business case. Yes. I do it for out of uh, passion and, and understanding what the dreams are of these actors that that uh, are putting their life uh, to 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 uh, to be here in, in Hollywood, to make it as a Latino and to yep. and, and, and for, you know, for for the shift that is happening right now. The shift is happening. It is here. It's not like, oh, we got to still fight and the, the statistics. I don't believe in statistics. I just, because I'm a talent manager and I see the breakdowns, yeah. uh, you know, my, my, you know, white friends, they're like, we're the minority now because all of the, most of the, of the breakdowns are Latinx, Latinx, Latinx. And we have 60 clients who are all latinx you know actors then i represent directors oh. and my film and tv are all it could be i'm not saying that it, for the for the project i say no it has to be a, a latino writer it has to be no it's those projects are mostly like it's my story and i am latina 
So it, let's see how it evolves. And and it's it, it's it's one. It's not that I ha- it has to be. You know, it's like for example, a beige person. They're not going to yeah. say, "Well, I just wanted to be beige people on my project." <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? Not when it comes to that. So everything is different, you know? So when it comes to being a creator and then hiring a writer to, uh, to make, to create something amazing, like for example, yesterday was great news for me. Uh, My film uh, that I, it's, it's inspired by my true story that it has to do a lot with the accident, you know, that I said, I want to tell my story. I want to, I want to make a great film and I didn't settle. I waited. You have to be patient. You can't just be like, okay, the script is ready to go. Let's go. <laughs> it's, uh, I think it's the best. It's a masterpiece. No, it's like, it's been years. Right. And, and now, um, fast forward. So I, I hired this wonderful writer. He w- wrote an amazing thriller. It's called Bella. Oh. And I have, um, a top, uh, producers attached the Hayes brothers from the conjuring. Okay. Wonderful. Yes. Congratulations. And- Denise Denovi, who's a top producer, and and yesterday it made it to uh, the announcement in Deadline. It made it to the blacklist as one of the top scripts, number seven or something. Congratulations! Oh, oh <laughs> Isabel, oh, what a lovely, what a lovely opportunity! Yeah, it is. It's amazing, and and I have to say, anyone who's listening that that wants to take a project and and put it out there that you have a great idea. It's all about the creative development. Yeah. That's where it is. The contacts, you will find someone. If the script is amazing and you go around and you knock on doors and not, the contacts are there. That's not what it's about. It's not about, oh, I want to get it to Netflix. How do I? It's like, no, worry about the writing. Are you a writer or you just think you're a good writer? Why not give an opportunity to someone who really is talented as a writer and hire them? Because there are great writers for hiring. Right. And that's what I do. I'm like, Aren't I'm there? a writer <laughs> and I don't want to be a writer, but I have great stories. So, so that's one thing that I, I, um, I truly just uh, advise people to, to look in and not try and do everything. Writer, main actor, editor. No. <laughs> no. Um, there's so many people out there that want to work and that are talented. So... Well, I, you know, I want to, since you, since you mentioned the accident and it was such an important part and an, uh, and, uh, and a turning point in your life, can you talk about the resilience that it took as you were sitting there days after the accident and you were looking and you were looking in the mirror and you were going, okay, I'm going to have to come back from this. What was the process, the, the soul process, the alma that you went through in in, in, in that, would you would you share that with us, Isabel? Oh my God, <laughs> that is deep. Uh, thank you. You're a deep person. I I love the word that you use, alma. Alma is soul. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know what it is, um, well, first of all, I was uh, absolutely grateful to be alive, and uh, that I didn't know how my face looked. Okay, because it was bandaged up and everything. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, the one thing that I knew there is that I was going to get through this because of the support of my family and the love. Um, and I think that my parents, being from Colombia, and then when they got married, they moved to the United States when they were 21, 19. You know, they had my brother in Queens. I was born in Queens. And all I saw from them is that resi- that what you said, the resilience, the resilience. To, to whatever happened they would always, the next day, would get up on their feet and start working and start going ahead and seeing what is next. And that always <sighs> has been, that has always been, no matter what I've been through, <laughs> which has been a lot, I'm, um, yep. I'll go through, we all go through stuff. Come on. Yeah. So, uh, every, everyone, every, everyone's everyone life is a challenge to the degree exactly. that we can possibly make it. Mm-hmm. That's where the compassion comes in yes. for one another and for ourselves. Yes. And then, and then to just uh, close that out with the accident, I didn't know how I was going to look, but I was, I was terrified because one of the things that, that made me who I was, was, was that I knew that, that I was, you know, I was born uh, beautiful and thank God, but, but I didn't really know that. I just, uh, but when I got into the car accident made me realize that I, (laughs) I didn't want to lose that beauty 
So it made me feel a little bit um, uh, afraid, but at the same time, I, I knew that, um, I, I just knew that there was hope, you know, in yeah. some way or the other. Whatever, yeah. however I looked like, it, it was just, I, I had no control. But it was- right, it, Exactly, it, but, but, but the looks are the face and, and the outside, but your brains and your heart. Yeah. Did you know you were smart? Did you did you have that that understanding that you had an ability to see things and and to be able to 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 do this that at, at the depth of that level to be able to rely on instead of just relying on your looks or relying on the fact that you were born beautiful? Yes. Well, that's the thing that I think that um uh, that, yeah, I mean, like I said, my parents were role model and still are to me. And I think that family and being proud of that, of, of, of the values uh, of your family is yes. very important, you know, and that, that you carry for the rest of your life. Um, and, 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 you know, all these experiences, like, you know, for example, coming to, to Hollywood to pursue one uh, career, but then that mm -hmm. led to what I'm doing right now, and I'm totally fine with it. I, it's not oh, like cool. I mean, for the first years I was like, oh, but I want to act, but oh, I want to go to you know, and I was still <laughs> auditions, but then I, I I didn't have time to learn my lines because I was so busy with the directors and my big life. So mm -hmm. one day my friend said, you know what, you came here because you wanted to what to be successful and 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 in in your acting like all of us, but you found success through representing actors and helping them and, and representing the, you know, directors and create. And, and I was like, Oh my God, thank you. I I'm, I'm fine now. You know, I'm, I'm going to oh. let you go. And this is what's meant for me is to, is to be of service now to the talent that especially the Latinx diverse that they need someone like me to elevate uh, and, and given the opportunity, even if it's, if it's not to represent them right then and there that they're not ready, but at least I, give time to everyone to say, okay, get a pen, write down, take notes. Here's what you're going to do. Bam, 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 bam. When you do that, come back. And and then everybody's like, oh my God, yes. And, and it's just that. I just want to be of service and, and give back what I've learned, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so what, Isabel, what is in your, your windshield? What are you looking at? I mean, you're looking, of course, developing the, the film and developing your, your story. What because because of your position as at the at the the leading edge of this of the uh, of the Latinx uh, mm -hmm. movement and being able being able to to show the kinds of economic value that investing in Latinx projects would be. So, what kinds of things are in your windshield? What 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 are you looking at? Uh, you mean as in uh, the future business-wise for my right. company? Right, your, your, your future and the business, and your, and oh. also your personal, also the the personal vision of where you see. Because I'm 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 seeing the opportunities really expand. The the, the talent is so much deeper. The talent pool is so much deeper than anyone has has mined so far. And we're and this is where where I see your your opportunity to continue to up to raise up talent, yeah. to be able to get them in front of people that can do that can do yes. this. And I'll give you an example that happened not too long ago, uh, probably a year a year and a half. Uh, there's a, a very talented actor. His name is Eddie Martinez. He's Colombian and he's lived here uh, all, most of his life. And he came to me, I, 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 I've known him and I, I've always been like, oh my God, I would love to represent Eddie Martinez. He's so talented. Um, and he came to me, he goes, okay, that's it. I, I think you're going to be the one that is going to really take my career to the next level. I'm like, nice. okay. I was like, okay, let's do it. I was like, thank you, God. Okay, Eddie Martinez, <laughs> <laughs> manifesting this. And then literally three weeks later or... or Four weeks later, I he books The Sinner as a series regular, opposite Bill Pullman, and um, and then he uh, was uh, recently in a documentary for PBS called Lights, Camera, Action that actually one of my directors uh, uh, shot uh, that I represent, and he was one of the um, actors that was interviewed about the the shift of exactly what we're talking about. The, the absolutely. 
the Latinos and everything. And he said there, which I was, I was there at the screening. I was like, oh my God. Like he said, you know what? The, the, the sinner, they weren't looking for a Latinx man. They were looking for a detective. And, and so it wasn't that. So he said, it was the first time in my career that I didn't play a drug dealer, that I got to have a good role that played just regular span, uh, that, that I spoke English and not just yep. Spanish. So do you see the elevation from from all this stuff? I mean, he did mm -hmm. major stuff like Narcos, Mexico, you know, g very great um, uh, projects. But but as that stereotype, right? Very, yeah. yeah, very. Now it's it, and that's oh. what I want. That's what I, I do for my actors, like just push them that they. But also it's very important, the, the development process that even 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 actors that are established, they still, every time they come to me, I still have to be like, okay, you need new this, you need to work on the real, we need to, you know, separate this, you need to shoot this. It's it's just about knowing, like you said, and this is the answer. What I wanna do is now that I've been here for over 20 years, uh, now I just, I know the formula to success for, for uh, talent and for projects. And so I love, when people reach out to me and it, it takes time, it takes time for me to review because I'm so busy and all that. However, if it's not uh, either me coming in as uh, as someone that would be involved with the project, but at least I, I, you know, that's the meaning of contacto, by the way, it comes from, <laughs> it comes from contact. I will, ha I have the contact or I can, you know, I can it's brainstorm like, okay, you know what? Your project is not ready, but I have these great people that can take your project to the next level creatively, and they can work with you on a consulting basis. So it's it's everything. It's everything. If if a, if a actor needs a reel, you know, then I have I have the resources for that. Uh, if a director who's a film director wants to get into commercial directing, then I will have. It's called the plan of action. Each mm -hmm. each person a different plan of action so that being said that i'm already doing and i've been doing so the next uh 10 20 years for contact contact is going to live on okay that's my vision of course it um, of course it is it, it's yeah. and so but the next okay so the next step is we are now expanding it because i um uh, i of course um need uh a team i i have a team but we are opening so many doors and especially with uh my projects that uh they are very um you know well written they're mainstream projects from from a creator that is latina so yep. so that is going to bring so much to our company and uh and 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 you know the talent we always are signing bigger and better and more established clientele so it's always an evolution and a growth so right now we are in talks with an investor a private equity to expand and make it a bigger company so we lucky can, investor so we can have uh you know more bandwidth with uh more exactly clients. How do you how do you as an executive keep your keep your bandwidth manageable so that you can renew yes. because there there are always more worthy projects than there is your time to do it and so you have to keep in keep in that bandwidth level. Yes, and um, a great question, and that is having a team that we can delegate who's going to do what. Uh, so I don't. I've been doing a lot on my own and then of course i've always had you know uh help uh, uh, admin help and and now i have actually there's uh four of us company which is a uh, head of talent i have the directors then there's a uh, director of creative development um so it is it has been growing so that helps a lot and of course when it comes to personal life i uh teach everyone no texting on the weekend, uh, no calling at eight in the morning on a Sunday to see if I like the real. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Yeah. Isabel, it's a, hello. Hello. Yeah. And, and they, everyone needs to know this is, this is a business treated like a business. Go have fun after 6 PM. You know, yeah. it's very, um, important for your spirit. You have to be happy. You have to, you know, take care of yourself. Exactly. And to have right? a balance and to have that, that, that kind of a balance. And, and yes, exactly. So that's, yeah. that's, that's very important to me.
Oh, Isabel, I, I am so proud to get a chance. I'm so grateful that Nadine, uh, N that Nadine Jolson brought us together because she is, she is, she's an extraordinary power, and and you're, and the opportunity to be able to meet you, knowing that we're seeing we're seeing the the rise of of the the Latinx uh, brand, and in, in addition to that, and I'm going to go into a subset of that because mm -hmm. those that identify as Latinx, because we're seeing just like in Chile, the, the new constitution there is going to require 50 percent uh, uh, women uh, in Mexico. The legislature now has 50 percent women in, in, in it. We're seeing the rise of the Latina and the Latina in power. And to see you, to see you as a leader, to, to, to really to, to bring this out inspires me to no end. I'm so grateful to meet you now and when, when you do have the bandwidth to spend some time with me because it is, it, it is such a gift. Yes, I love it. And I, just one thing I want to tell everyone, all the Latinos, diverse, everyone, that this is, uh, it gives us a, lots of hope for the future. And there are many organizations that are working uh, for you uh, towards uh, the elevation of Latinos in Hollywood, of diversity, and, and they are uh, making a mark that you have all these studios and everyone that they have now, uh, you know, diversity uh, executives and how are we going to bring in diversity? And now uh, there's a uh, requirement that every show has has a diverse cast. So do you get, yeah, I know, so do you get this? Uh, evolution and the progress and it's all because there are people fighting for that for many years you know I, I and i am looking at one now no thank you you have fought you have fought I, hard you 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 worked the ground when it was hard when it was uh, packed in and you broke the ground and you broke it and then you opened the door for so many that are able to come behind you. I want to thank you for the hard work that you have done that al has allowed so many of our uh, comadres and compadres yes. to, to be able to come, come behind because this is wins for everyone. For this, everyone. Is not a, this is not an or gate. The, 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 the wins for the Latinx community does not mean the, the, the subsuming, but it means that we have a much richer environment for all of us to thrive in. Yes, exactly, exactly. And you know, I what I love to get is a call and and just thank you, thank you. This this job changed my life, so thank you so much. And I do it for that. That thank you, you know. Exactly. I Gracias. Love it. A, yeah, and, that, and that's what we're doing. Uh, Isabel, mucho gusto, and oh, thank you gusto. so much, comadre, for the opportunity to be able to meet you, to meet you, and to spend some time with you because this is our time. This, this is, is our time. important. This is it, because it will never be more. It will never be more important than us investing right now yes. in the time for all of us because it is nosotros. It is we are nosotros. all on this little blue marble that's yeah. out here at the uh, on the edge of the Milky Way, and if we're not going to do this together, what the hell are we doing? Exactly. Dennis, thank you so much because you are doing that for us right now, which is we are having a word or, or we're speaking what what it's about, Latinx, diversity, yep. Hollywood. So you are serving uh, good. You're serving good right now. Wonderful. Bro. Wins all around. All right. Thank you, thank Isabel. You. And thank you, everyone, who tuned in to Recently you. Spontaneous Conversation. And we look forward to seeing everyone next time. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs> This episode of Reasonably Spontaneous Conversations has been brought to you in part by In Search of the New Compassionate Male. For more information, go to newcompassionatemale.com.